hey guys welcome to my channel to my new subscribers welcome 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 and to my returning subscribers welcome back i really appreciate each and every one of you now for today's episode i'll be making some brown stewed lionfish and i'm going to be doing it with something that you have never heard of before and that is some crushed renta yam i'll be doing it similar to mashed potatoes but in my own unique way and of course to me the flavor is far better than regular mashed potatoes all right this is something that if you're in jamaica the yams are easily accessible so you can get them in the market very very cheap all right what makes today's video even more special is that for part one you can head on over to my brother's channel at jamaican dive king i'll be putting the link to his channel in the pinned comments and of course i'll be putting putting his name across the screen so you'll see exactly what you're looking for whenever you search for jamaican dive king all right guys so please go over there give him some support and of course you can tell him that diana in the kitchen sent you now let's jump right into today's video for the list of ingredients or for a quick breakdown in the ingredients you're going to be needing some lion fish and of course these fish they are they are amazing absolutely amazing to me they're a cross between a parrot fish and a grouper in texture and also in taste all right and they are an invasive species but, but of course you'll get all that information over on my brother's channel so yeah head on over all right so i'll be using these of course they range in size and listen to me this is one fish if you see just kill it all right so we need some lionfish of course and we're going to be needing some tomatoes a couple of tablespoons of butter we're going to be needing some carrots you can use about one large carrot or two small carrots and over in this bowl i have some scallion some onion and some thyme along with some red chili flakes also a scotch bonnet pepper in this i have some shredded garlic over here i have some dried parsley and in this i have a mixture of spices i have salt i have maggi fish seasoning i have some paprika and i have some black pepper this is all you need because of course you know that fish does not require a lot of seasoning and especially because these are freshly caught it makes it even easier to cook and in this I have a medley of veggies and I have some string beans or some green beans I have some chocho I think in the in other states or in the US or other countries they're called either coyote or Christophines all right and I also have some green bell pepper and for the mash yam I have some renta yam over here I have them in some water to prevent them from oxidizing and you're also going to be needing about two tablespoons of sour cream three to four tablespoons of cream cheese and we're going to need two tablespoons of butter all right and we're also going to be needing a tablespoon and a half of regular all-purpose flour and we're also going to be needing some full cream milk all right, so without further ado, I'm going to be setting everything aside. I'm going to be mixing my spices and seasoning my fish. But while you're prepping, guys, ensure that you have a pot of boiling water because we're going to be needing that to boil the yams. And you can also put your oil to heat up at this point. Now to season this, all we're going to do is just to take our spice mixture. We're going to mix everything together. Instead of sprinkling everything individually, I think that mixing everything prior gives it a more even distribution of all the spices. So that way you don't have any more or less of one particular spice in a spot or a region of the fish. All right. So all we're going to be doing is just to sprinkle on each side. I already pat dried these fish. And we're not going to be using everything at once. Ensure you get inside the cavities. And we're just going to do seasoning on both sides. And 
and we're going to reserve some of this for when we are making our sauce so that looks pretty good as i said guys fish is something that is some is something that you don't want to over season all right because it's already fresh and believe it or not the sea did some of the work for you by giving it the flavor from that salted water so you really don't need a lot of seasoning you can also just go in with just plain salt and black pepper and it will still be amazing all right so just rub everything in And this is going to be something that is going to go pretty quickly so you want to have everything prepared ahead of time it is really an easy dish to come together it will take maybe an hour but no more okay, so I'm just going to set these aside and get my hands washed all right guys so I'll be using this pot for the yams and I already have some salt in the water along with some lemon juice and that's just to prevent it from getting black while it's oxidizing. Now to this pot I'm going to be adding some garlic, that's about two or three cloves of garlic. And then after that I'm just going to add the yams and wait for them to boil, you can check them at off or because we want them to boil really soft yes so that is all we need to do and we're just going to place the yams in carefully and we're just going to cover the pot slightly just slightly cover the pot like this. If you should close it all the way, then trust me, you're going to have problems when it begins to froth over. So just slightly cover the pot and just allow it to do its thing. Okay, so now that we have the yams going, we can turn our attention to our fish and to, to begin preparing that. All we're going to be doing is just to drop a scotch bunny pepper in the oil, which is ready and of course you want to be frying these on high heat so we're going to be putting them in head to tail so carefully Place your first fish in, and then we're going to place the other one in the opposite direction. And all we're going to do is just to allow that to fry until golden brown on both sides. So this will take about five minutes her side to get golden brown but if you like your fish to be a little bit more dry you can go about six to seven minutes per side so in the meantime while the yam is boiling and the fish is frying away I'll be preparing another um, portion of my meal and that is the veggies so I'm just gonna put on some boiling water just to blanch them in order to just saute them when I'm ready to serve all right guys so these are ready to be flipped and all we're going to be doing you can get either a fish spatula or a regular flat spatula and just thir turn turn <laughs> yes sir well mr henry is not hearing this because by my industry he will be very disappointed Ooh. All right, just turn them over like that and allow them to go for another five minutes on that side. Okay. 
Just make sure you get under that skin properly so you don't have any tears like I do. But these are looking lovely. All right, guys, so now that we have turned them, what we're going to allow them to do is just cook for an additional five minutes on the other side. And then we're going to take those out and repeat the same process for the rest of the fish that we have. As I mentioned prior, we're going to start blanching our veggies. So I just allow the water to come to a boil while they're in the pot. So I'm just going to turn it off now. Allow them to sit in the water for about 10 minutes and then I take them out because we're blanching just to ensure that they remain crunchy when we cook them all right so i'm going to also shock this with some cold water but i'm going to allow them to blanch for about 10 minutes blanching also helps to retain the color in your veggies guys so this is a very important step if you want nice vibrant greens so now that the oil has quieted down just like in my fried chicken video guys that means whatever you're cooking is ready to get out all right so you don't need to put these um on any absorbent paper but you can if you want to get rid of the excess oil but i'm just going to drain this off a little bit in the pot and just place them back on that same tray that i had them seasoned on And this is how I like my fried fish, not too dry, all right? So for the other fishes, we're going to do the same thing. Place them in the opposite direction of each other. That way you get to add more fish to the pot. You get more space that way, all right? All right guys, so it has been roughly 10 minutes since I had these in the pot. I'm going to remove them. And I have some water right here with some ice. And I'm going to use to shock. The veggies. And we're just going to discard this water and give it a give the pot a quick rinse. All right, we're pulling these down. See, I know, guys, but I decided to do some blanch carrots as well, so I'm just going to put them in the same bowl. With the other veggies once they have been blanched and of course the yams are boiling away looking really really good all right so these are ready to be taken out of the pot as well so i'm going to do that throw off the oil and my yam should be ready just let us give it a quick test can just use a wooden skewer to test it. These can go for maybe another five minutes. Yes, they are almost ready. So I'll give this another five minutes and then after that, we'll begin to work on our sauce and then we'll wrap everything together. All right guys, so to begin making the sauce, the first thing we're going to be doing is adding three tablespoons of butter. And please don't use a new pot or anything because all these little bits and pieces of fish just gives additional flavor, all right? And then to this, we're going to be adding the onion as well as the thyme and the red pepper flakes and we're just going to let this sit and sweat and you want to be doing this on medium low heat all right
So just bring everything together and allow them to begin sweating. And in the meantime, we can begin working on our yams. After the onions have been sweating for about a minute, we are going to add our garlic. Just reserving a little bit for the veggies. And of course, we're going to be giving this a quick. All right, so this now we're going to be adding our carrots as well as our tomato. And our seasoning. All of it. Also going to add a little bit of the dried parsley and reserve the rest for the mash. Then I totally forgot to tell you guys earlier, but in this cup, I have one cup of ketchup. I also have two tablespoons of soy sauce, as well as two tablespoons of sugar. And this is what we're going to be using to top off our sauce. So just allow these to go for another minute or two. Oops. And we're going to be stirring constantly because as I said before we want them to be cooked but not mushy so after about two minutes we're going to be adding the flour so we have a tablespoon and a half of flour And we're going to be adding this. Just allow the flour to cook for a minute. And then we're going to be adding all our liquid. So now it's time to add our ketchup mixture. I'm going to need some additional water. So to begin, we're just going to add an additional cup of water to this. And we are going to give it a quick stir. If you don't want to use ketchup, what you can use is tomato paste and you can start from there but I'll show you guys in another video how to achieve the same sauce using tomato paste and of course since this is a little bit thicker than I need it to be I'm going to add some more water so that's another quarter cup of water and yes, no, it's at the consistency that I like. And the color is perfect. So we're going to allow this to cook for about two minutes. And then we're going to add the fish. So this is what our fish is looking like. Lovely, quite lovely. All right, guys, so we'll be carefully placing our fish back into the sauce or carefully placing them into the sauce, and it's nothing special. Just place them in the sauce like this. Let me get the spoon out of the way, following the same pattern that we discussed earlier. 
head to tail. All right, the smaller ones, just ensure that those are on top. Just to make your life easier when you want to get them out. And all we're going to do at this point is just to spoon over some of the sauce on top of our fish. Sauce is very rich and nice. And of course, if you want a more runny sauce, you can exempt the roux that we made with the flour. And all we're going to do right now is just to top off with our green bell pepper. And we're just going to cover this for three minutes and then we turn the flame off. All right, so I'll see you guys in three minutes. Guys, to begin working on our mash, we're going to take our pot, put it half mask like this. Or you can use a colander, but I don't feel like dirtying any more utensil. And we're just going to throw off the excess water. Alright. Ooh, nice. And the only thing we're going to do is just to transfer the yams over to a bowl. Like this. Don't worry about the garlic. We got all the flavor from the garlic already. And once we have done this, we're going to work on it immediately. All right, guys. So to do the mash, you have a few options that you can use. You can go ahead and use a regular mash like this, or you can use the one that looks like a cup, or you can use a regular stand mixer i'm opting to use a stand mixer today because i want a creamier finish all right so to our yams we're going to be adding the cream cheese as well as the sour cream and the butter and we're going to mix on low so this will be almost like baking a cake are preparing a butter for a cake so you get a much creamier texture if you're supposed to or if you were to use a mixer in comparison to a regular potato masher and to do this step you need the yams to be hot because you want that cream cheese to be melted you want that butter to be melted All right see how creamy that is All right, so once you see that butter, everything has been melted, we're going to just pause for a second, and we're going to add about half cup of milk. So we're going to mix on low again, until everything is incorporated. can increase the speed just to make it even more fluffy so while this is going I'm going to go ahead and add some of our dried parsley so this can be a herbed mashed yam the end in the kitchen style if you prefer if you prefer to call it that Right, so you can look at the texture and see if you want something less, you know, creamy. Check on your texture to see if you need to add more milk. If you want it to be lighter than this, you can go ahead and add more milk. But for me, this is perfect. Right? Look at this. 
nice and creamy so at this point too guys don't forget to turn your flame off on your fish and believe it or not guys it's this simple it was this simple to get a really nice side dish all right so I'm just going to be covering this and keep it warm until I'm ready to serve so the last thing we need to do for today is work on the veggies and I'm going to be sauteing them right now so our fish is done and looking good so now we're going to be working on our veggies in this little pot all right guys so this next step is going to come together pretty quickly so make sure you have everything on hand so in the pot we're going to add about a teaspoon of extra virgin olive oil you can choose to use coconut oil if you like and we're going to add our garlic immediately and guys remember that olive oil has a high burning point so we want to work pretty quickly when we're dealing with this all right Remember the fish was already fried, so we don't want to be doing anything too greasy for the veggies. We're just going to add the veggies to the pot. Oops. And remember to do this on low, all right? just a really quick saute constantly stir to prevent anything from burning next thing we're going to add is a pinch of salt just a tiny pinch or three of salt Give that a quick mix. And the next thing we're going to be adding is just a tiny pinch of dried parsley. And believe it or not, our veggies are finished. So guys, the next thing, the most exciting part of the video, I'll be plating up and I'll be serving and I'll be showing you guys exactly what my finished meal looks like. So stay tuned. There you have it guys, a meal fit for a king in less than one hour. Alright, so 
Don't forget to go over and check out Jamaican Dive King on his channel. Show him some support, show him the same amount of love or even more that you have shown me. Alright, so until next time, this is Dana in the Kitchen. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe. And of course, click on that post notification bell so you'll get notified every time I post a new video. Until next time, this is Dana in the Kitchen. Thank you so much for watching.